Now, uh, now, Nemo, what are you uh, what are you doing here at the Robo Games? Well, I'm an artist primarily, so I have sculptures that remind people of robots, and that's why I was deemed relevant for this kind of event. Okay, and, and how did you get into that whole sort of field of sculpture? Well, I watched a lot of science fiction movies when I was a kid and found I had a, a real steady habit of taking appliances and machines apart. And eventually, after a few years of just collecting objects, they started to sort of form back together into the sculptures that I've developed uh, over the years since then. Okay, so did you study some sort of like design or art at, at university or did you just kind of uh, teach yourself? I went to the Kansas City Art Institute and then I went to UC Berkeley for a uh, graduate degree in art as well. All the mechanics and engineering work has had to come uh, later, sort of through the help of friends, word of mouth, trial and error. So you have a whole bunch of sort of technical people helping you out with those aspects of it and, and kind of uh, collaborating? I have a few in particular who've been really indispensable to me. Cool. Uh, do you want to give them a shout out on the show? I do. Christopher Palmer, who's here today also, has been by far my biggest technical support. He's really responsible for a lot of things that have not caught fire. <laughs> uh, is, that, is that a danger in this industry? Have you had a few like near mishaps? Well, the work I do is, is pretty, uh, it's pretty delicate in nature compared to a lot of the combat-based work you'll see here today. Um, so I don't have necessarily pyrotechnics or anything, but I'm still de dealing with electricity and moving parts. and you can definitely go wrong. <laughs> now, uh, I know that I, I happen to uh, view a few exhibits by one of your sort of, uh, men not mentors, but you know, the inspirations. Uh, can you just talk quickly about Arthur Ganson? Yeah. You could definitely call him a mentor if you like, although we've never met. Um, he's been a, a real inspiration as one who has taken machine form and really, really made it an art experience. And uh, there's really nobody better at it, in my opinion. So h how long has he been uh, doing it? When was the field sort of established? Well, I couldn't say. It's, it's been around longer than I have, that's for sure. It's uh, nothing new under the sun. I was in, uh, influenced heavily by Clayton Bailey and the Survival Research Laboratory group uh, when I was younger. I wasn't aware of Arthur Ganson until more recently. But I assume that people were doing it way before them even. It was just when I sort of woke up and started paying attention. Yeah, well, I guess since the days of the Mechanical Turk and all that sort of stuff, I mean, it's uh, people have been experimenting with uh, robotics and cybernetics and the in intersection with art. Exactly. Um, Trying yeah. to mimic the, the form that we're used to walking around in all the time. It's a pretty old art idea. It's just as the technology advances, we get more and more ways to, to explore it. Cool. And, and uh, do you see a lot more intelligence being built into these machines as, as time goes by? You, do you think we're going to see, you know, uh, cyber sex bots like the ones out of Metropolis uh, anytime soon? I do. I think I won't have much to do with it. I'm still a real uh, nuts and bolts kind of character. I don't have uh, programming knowledge. I don't use programmable chips. I'm doing a very low-tech approach. I still like, you know, wind-up toys. But if you look around you today, you're going to see that things are pushing into some very interesting far-out territory that I, I get a real kick out of uh, witnessing, but I, I lose personal connection if I can't, you know, touch the parts and, and have a more, I don't know, toy-like experience, I guess. Also, uh, we have to ask, uh, Star Wars or Star Trek? Well, Star Wars, definitely. The scene where uh, the, the robots are being salvaged by the sand people and, and stripped down for parts, I often sort of blame for being uh, why my life took the shape it did. I've been sort of chasing that feeling my whole life. And my shop now looks quite a bit like that salvage ship. So you are a Jawa, is that what you're trying to say? Um, I've often felt like I was perhaps the largest Jawa. <laughs> King of the Jawas. Could be, yeah, I could take yeah. like six or seven of them. Yeah, I've seen you in the dark. Those glowing yellow eyes are a dead giveaway. All right, Nemo, thank you very much for being on Planet Nerd. Thank you very much for having me. Cheers.